worth more. There's nothing worth more I could ever come close. Nothing can compare. Nor I'll live anymore. Your presence, Lord, I've tasted and seen. to a time of uh, encouragement and looking at your word, Lord. Please let my words only be those of yours. And I pray, Lord, as I bring what I feel you've laid on my heart, Lord, that you will just come and um, touch everyone who's watching this now, Lord. In your name. Amen. Amen. So, just get this off. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go to my notes. So this morning, uh, we're going to be looking, we're going to be coming out of Matthew 6 um, from verse 25, uh, a very famous verse about not being anxious. Um, I'm going to be reading from the ESV, so it might be slightly different if you're in a different uh, Bible translation, but I'm going to start from verse 25 through to verse 34. Uh, so uh, we'll go ahead now. <clears throat> Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his lifespan? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, 
Even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself, for the day is its own trouble. So that first word, therefore, reminds us of what Jesus has just said in the previous verses about treasures in heaven. Why do we store up earthly treasures? We do it because we're worried about what the future may hold. If we are no longer working, we will be able to live. Jesus says we are not to worry about the future. For the most part, we all know where our next meal is coming from and our next paycheck is coming from. Jesus asked the rhetorical question, is life not worth more than food? Jesus uses the, images, uh, the image of the birds. Birds are not anxious or worry about what the future may hold. They do not store things up for security, yet God still provides for them. I heard an interesting quote a couple of weeks ago that said, worrying works because 90% of the things I worry about never happen. Jesus challenges us with asking if we can add any time to our lives by worrying. We are certainly in a worrying time. We're not sure of how long we'll be in lockdown. We're not sure how long we won't be able to meet or go back to our normal place of work or our normal way of life. But we're called to trust in the one who is in control of all things. We've heard a few times over the past couple of weeks that nothing in this situation is a surprise to God. He is not panicking, he is not worrying, nor is he overwhelmed. Jesus asks us to look at the flowers and the grass that is dressed and cared for so well. Will he not look after us so much more? The Lord knows that we need all these things that worry us. Clothes, food, shelter, financial provision in this time of uncertainty. But we are to seek first the kingdom and these things will be given to us. We have a perfect opportunity in this time of isolation to become closer to God than we can imagine. We have reason to press into him in this season, as we know he will bring us through no matter the outcome. God will never keep his children in isolation from himself. He promises to never leave us or forsake us. Let's pray. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you that we can meet in this way. Thank you that so many of us can connect from our living rooms or our bedrooms or our studies or even still in the church building on our own. We thank you that you are still here. We thank you that you have not gone anywhere. We thank you that we can cast all our cares on you. I thank you that you are you. I thank you that you are still by our side. You are still living in us. I pray for those, Lord, who may be anxious and worrying about this time, that you come and visit them now. You come and give them that peace that's beyond understanding. You just come and be with all of us, Lord, as we navigate this uncertain path. And we pray this, Lord, in your Son's holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.